It's on Friday Football Fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. Hello, this is Alonzo Cheer, and you're watching the Friday Football Fever. Uh, Alonzo Trier is also a high school football fan. Bear down. Azure Energy Southern Arizona, it is now time for the highly acclaimed, much anticipated Friday football fever week zero. Good evening to you. I'm Paul Cicala. We will check in with Ari Alexander in just a bit. Let's get right into it. Coach Jeff Skurin and his boys are coming off an 11 win season, but this year they'd have to kick things off against mighty Scottsdale Saguaro, who finished unbeaten 14-0 with the state title, talking Catalina Foothills. And how would the Catalina Foothills respond at quarterback with four-year starter Rhett Rodriguez moving on? I can tell you this, they put up 13 points. That's the good news. The bad is this. The Sabercats, Max Massingale hits Logan Pet John. You will see Saguaro take it in right after that. Catalina Foothills trails 6-0. And then, boom! Oh, yeah, out goes the lights. The stadium goes dark for about 30 minutes. The lights had to be reset in Texas of all places. That's right. A company in Texas turned the lights back on. Didn't seem to bother the Sabercats, though. There's Massengale hitting Logan Pet John again. And then Loray Lucas is going to take it home. It's 13 zip Scottsdale Saguaro in a rematch of last year's state championship game. Scottsdale Saguaro wins again 41 to 13. All right, on to South Point High School we go, where the Lancers hosted longtime Phoenix area rival St. Mary's. Let's pick things up in the first quarter, and Bajan Robinson McLeod will take it right up the middle, and then he is rising up. Slow move. That, folks, will propel South Point to a first down. And a bit later, Rodrigo Nieto, a quarterback, will get the ball to Bajan Robinson McLeod again, and he is coming right at you. After everything is said and done, he will be stopped just short of the end zone. Oh, so close, but no worries because Nieto will reward him and he gets Robinson McLeod the ball once again. Coming up right here, easy touchdown. South Point leads 27 zip, cruises to an opening night victory. 47-6 is your final. Robinson McLeod rushed for 207 yards and five touchdowns. Hey, moving on, let's now skip our way from Midtown, of course, to Another area in Midtown heading east from South Point to Rincon and University High. Ari Alexander has more as the Rangers Whoa. hope to upset Pueblo High School. Paul, did you say 207 and five touchdowns? That sounds <laughs> like a player of the week performance to me, but right now let's talk about Rincon Pueblo. Last year a blowout for Pueblo, and that led to our first Jack in the Box player of the week. Can the improved Rincon team get the home win? Started out 38 nothing at halftime for Pueblo, and then Dominic Carrillo will take the snap. A fumble on the play, Rincon the recovery, and then Zeon Naperi will hand off to Marco Hernandez. It's another fumble, big TJ Martin in there with the recovery, and Pueblo will capitalize Carrillo to Adrian Gonzalez. Not the Dodgers' first baseman, but maybe better. Touchdown Warriors, that would be 44-0. Pueblo wins big, 58 to zip. On to our game of the week, the Sierra Vista Buena Colts taking on the Tucson High Badgers down there in Sierra Vista. Colts looking to snap a 21-game losing streak. First drive for Tucson High, Jesus Montano is sacked by Angel Ramirez and Landon Shumway of Bueno will get the ball. Bueno would get in the red zone after that and their quarterback, Giovanni Borbone, is going over the top to the tight end, Khalil Gardley. Touchdown Colts, kick will be blocked. 6-0 Buena, but Tucson would come back. Montano handles it this time, and he will run through that Colt defense for a Tucson high touchdown. 7-6 Badgers lead. Tucson getting the ball back in the second quarter, and Montano from one yard out plows it in for the touchdown. 14-12 at half, but second half all Tucson. 29-12, they get the win, and there's a sheriff on the call. Hey, you can show me clear from the accident scene back on duty. That's Cochise County Sheriff Mark Daniels, and when he's not protecting the community. Never done radio, saluting the microphone in my patrol car for 33 years. This is the first, so am I nervous? No, not really. He's out calling football games. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. The community's given me so much, an opportunity to give me, for me to give back to the community what they've given me over the years. I chose Mark because he's real. 
and and that reel will come across. He knows the kids. And he's got a seasoned partner in Steve Kurtz that will make sure he succeeds. This is my 40th year here at Buena. The first couple of games will be a learning experience, yes. And we'll learn how, when it's time for him to speak and when I speak. So if you happen to be near a radio on Friday nights, check out the Sheriff's Dispatch on football. Time the cold defense is waiting for it. In Sierra Vista, Ari Alexander, News for Tucson. Hey, good stuff, Ari. Moving on, the matchup between Ironwood Ridge and Marana could have very well been labeled the Friday Football Fever Game of the Week. Both teams come into this year after nine win season. Ironwood Ridge, of course, took home last year's showdown by 20 points in a game that saw the teams putting up a combined 104 on the scoreboard. Let's head on out to the proud city of Marana. Into the first quarter we go. Marana's up 7-0, and the Tigers' Trenton Borgay will fire it to the left flat and connect with Alfred Ibuhoha. Look at him break tackles and go. He will motor his way all the way to the 10 yard line. Then with nine seconds left in the quarter, Anthony Valencia scores from the one. Moran leads 14 to zero. All right, on to the second quarter we go and Heath B. Miller of Ironwood Ridge will air it out to Andrew Cook, who nearly makes it in. You be the judge. Next play, Nick Broiler will power it in for the score. That'll be 14-7 at that point. Cutting the lead to a touchdown It's still the second quarter and the Tigers are roaring, but the Nighthawks know what Bayanis says. No way, uh-uh. He will come through with the INT. The Bayanis interception sets up an Ironwood Ridge score on a nice pass coming right up from Heath B. Miller to Sean Walker. And the Nighthawks narrow the margin at the half. 14-13, Miranda leads, but the winner in the end is Ironwood Ridge surviving a 42-35 victory. Hey, we're far from over with after the break. More must-see highlights including our Friday Football Fever play of the night. Maybe it was in the game of Miranda we just saw. Plus, Rio Rico hopes to steal the game on the road to Catalina High. Well, Tanka Verde and Palo Verde battle it out on the east side. We revisit the Coaches for Charity kickoff classic between Sunnyside and Nogales. The Friday Football Fever rolls on. It's on Friday Football Fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. Hey, gotta love the Sunnyside High School cheerleaders. More on the Blue Devils game with Nogales in a bit. Welcome back, my friends. I'm Paul Cicala. Ari Alexander is standing by. But first, quick reminder, you can see all of the scores for all the big matchups on our ticker right below. And we'll have full rundowns on KVOA.com. But for now, Let's get back into it, shall we? Rio Rico High School traveled to Catalina not only for an opening handshake, but to get their D on. Defense, that is. Catalina's Malik Martin would be forced to scramble, and then he will throw it up, and Jesus de la Rocha will come up with it for a nice return for the Hawks as well. Rio Rico's in business, and a few snaps later, Coach Zach Davila calls up a play that'll see Michael Bustamante hitting Brian Morales. And check out the diving catch still. Catalina would get the ball right back, and then Trocavian Daniels is putting in work. Just running people over. Check it out. Big guy, big guy, big guy. His long run will set Catalina up for a potential score, but a couple plays later, Rio Rico's Jalen Callejo is going to force the fumble. Check it out. Stripping it right there, and his Elias de la Roca recovering. Blown opportunity for the Trojans. No worries, though. Catalina wins big, 31 to 0. And from the north side, let's head on out to the Far East. The Tanker Verde host to Palo Verde in a battle of Verdes. There's Ari Alexander. And Ari, it is all green. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. The first time I found Palo Verde High School is it was the one next to the Popeye's Chicken, which was the only one in town at the time. It is the battle of the Verdes. Palo Verde and Tanker Verde, both teams struggled last season to the tune of five combined wins. But one, we're going to start the season off the right way. Let's go straight to the first quarter after they break some paper. Fourth down, quarterback Devontae Bates taking the snap, and he is going to run all the way for the touchdown for the Titans. The extra point is good, seven to nothing. Palo Verde, Eddie Garcia getting some support in the visitors' bleachers. Some people with the signs. Aiden Gonzalez taking the snap. Short little pass here to Gavin Johnson, and then Johnson is going to make a run. Almost takes it all the way, breaking tackles and then gets taken down. That's going to set it up for Marlo Corona. 
for the short touchdown and the line on top, 7-6. to six. Palo Verde in the lead here is Marlo Corona. One more time, a nice run, one tackle broken. There will be more. Or he's just going to keep running. Corona over inside the 10, and then quarterback will take it himself. Two-point conversion is good. Palo Verde will lead 14-7 to seven. in the end. The Titans hold on for the victory, 31-27. to 27. Hey, and Ari, flip out on this. Oh, uh, yeah, Nogales High School traveled from Santa Cruz County on Thursday and was hoping for an upset on the home turf for the Blue Devils, but Sunnyside got it going first. Quarterback Joe Fuentes will hit Jose Silva in full stride, and he's gonzo, just like that. Blue Devils lead 7-0, but Nogales would push forward. How about QB Josue Tapia getting it to Ivan Romero? The first down helps set up a field goal. It'll be 7-3 at the end of one. In between quarters, Nogales baseball coach O.J. Favela was honored as the Coaches for Charity signature coach. Then Nogales to the 4A state title in baseball. And on to the next period we go, and Joe Fuentes is taking it. He's no Nestle Quick, but he is Speedy Gonzalez. Under, under, under. He will take it to the house to put Sunnyside up 13-3, but a bit later, Josue Tapia is gonna find Leo Yepis, and Yepis says, give me a piece. Capiche? That's a touchdown for Yapis. Nogales cuts the lead to 13-10, actually went up 16-13 St. Porter, but the Blue Devils broke off 23 unanswered points and cruised to a 36-16 victory. All right, now let's get to the Friday football fever play of the week. We're going to head back out to Marana once again with the Tigers gunning for a win over Ironwood Ridge. And in the second quarter would be a big play from the quarterback Heath B. Miller to Andrew Cook of Ironwood Ridge. Little diving catch there, nearly makes it into the end zone. I'm saying he was down before it was a touchdown. Hey there, Miss Ironwood Ridge. Look at that. Long pass, nice catch, good play. That is our play of the week. Hey, all right, it is that time of the night, of course, that we look forward to the very least time to say goodbye. And don't forget for Full updates on all the high school football action, you can go to kboa.com. You can also click on each story and we'll have extra highlights and footage from the game they weren't able to include in the show. Bonus coverage for Ari Alexander. I'm Paul Sikala. Have a positive, productive weekend filled with lots of football via kboa.com. Enjoy our montage of more high school highlights. Hi, Mom. Yes. Let's go, Mom.